Hello and welcome to my 39 weeks pregnant update with our third baby. Yes, I am still pregnant. <laughs> Hashtag still pregnant. In my last update I talked about early labor signs happening and things gearing up to start labor and I wasn't sure if it would be my last update. That was two days ago and now I'm officially 39 weeks pregnant. So what happened was two days ago I had contractions all day long. They were in a regular pattern and they were different than the Braxton Hicks. They seemed to be more regular and more intense and so I was tracking them throughout the day, went about my day and I went to bed that night thinking that they would speed up and I would wake up in the night and be ready to have this baby. And what happened was that things actually slowed down and stopped. And so I woke up kind of confused because I actually slept pretty well. I'm thankful for that, but was not expecting that. So contractions basically stopped and I kind of panicked because we thought, okay, it's baby day, it's probably gonna happen. And uh, my husband woke up and was asking if he should go to work and I said, I don't know, like I don't know what's going on. And so I got up and I took a shower because that's been really helping is taking a hot shower and getting hot water on my back and on my belly to help with the achiness and soreness and cramping, all the great third trimester pregnancy symptoms. And I just boo-hooed cried because I was like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know when this baby is coming. I don't want to send him to work and then things ramp up and I don't want to keep him home. And so my mind was just going crazy and it was stressing out about it, freaking out about it. And I didn't even realize how tense I was, but with tracking those contractions, timing them, and trying to get things ready, all that day I was really tired and so I don't think my body was ready for it to ramp up even though it was getting more intense than it has been I've had Braxton Hicks for a long time for months really on and off but this was really the first time where I thought this could be it because they're regular they were a few minutes apart it seemed like other things were progressing and so at that point it was just unknown because I didn't know if things were going to pick up again or not. Like if I was gonna be pregnant for a few more days or another week or who knows. Such a roller coaster of emotions. But I started crying and then I couldn't stop crying. There was snot everywhere. Not, not good. And I updated my midwife. I was like, I'm freaking out. I'm dealing with like the thoughts and fears at this point of not knowing. And so my midwife came over first thing in the morning and she checked on me and coached me through some of those things and she gave me a big hug and said, it's gonna be okay. Like you're doing good and the baby's doing good. They're coming soon, no matter what. And just reminding me that I'm ready, that I've done this before, that we can do this again. And that was really helpful. And I had her check on the baby's position and had her check me to see if I was dilated because at this point I hadn't had any cervical checks because there hadn't been active labor signs, hadn't been regular contractions to progress dilation. And I had guessed that I was probably a couple centimeters dilated for a while, which you can walk around at a two or a three for weeks. So it's not necessarily a sign that labors soon. It just means your body is getting ready for it. So I did have her check me and I was about a two or a three dilated, which is good, but it's not active labor yet. It's still early labor, could still be days, could still be a week, but I wanted to know at this point. I was like, should my husband go to work? Because I don't want to send him and then have to come back and all of that. And she said, you need to focus on the moment, you need to focus on today. Don't worry about later today, don't worry about tomorrow, don't worry about next week. Like you have no control over that. So all you can do is focus in on how are you feeling right now? What can you do right now? Like what's comfortable, what's helpful? And so that kind of brought me back, grounded me to be able to breathe and relax. I did not realize how tense I was trying to get this baby out and, and get ready and just kind of wearing myself out, being so tired. Um, and so I don't think my body was ready, but it's kind of like a trial run 
false alarm, but um, I also asked my midwife, like, when should I call you? Because contractions were a few minutes apart, then they stopped, so what do I do? And she said, you can call me whenever you need to. Whenever you feel the need, just call me. And so that was really comforting too, and I just wanted to share a few things that she said that helped me when I was panicking and stressing out about the timing and what we were going to do. Because you can have a plan, you can have a backup plan, but it can always change. And that's kind of what happened, is all we were doing, we were going by the signs, going by contractions, and waiting to see what would happen. And so that's the closest we've been to active labor. And from my research and from hearing from friends who have gone through labors like this with start and stop contractions, there's a name for it. It's called prodromal labor. And that means that their regular contractions, they kind of um, feel stronger than Braxton Hicks, but they're not active labor contractions that dilate the cervix. So it's called pre-labor, and it's just your body getting ready for the real thing, getting toned up. And I remembered going through this before with my second baby. And so I went back to some vlogs that I had from 39 weeks at... Uh, with my second baby and I was it was weird it was like deja vu watching back on that vlog and it was basically what I'm going through right now at 39 weeks because it was start and stop contractions and they would be you know almost timeable it'd be a little stronger but then stop or slow down and then be further apart and not progressing and so I remember that and it's such a mind game at this point but I knew I had to relax so I've been doing things to try to relax and just take my mind off of it, not worry about it so much. And instead, if I do feel worried or stressed, pray about it and give it to God because he's the only one that's in control of this and he knows when it's going to happen. And so I just have to get to a new level of trust and remember that God is in control and that I'm not and that's okay because... It's not going to be very long either way, whether the baby waits a few more days or a week or however long, it won't be long until they're here with us and in our arms and we're so excited just to meet them. And so, you know, the anticipation is growing and we're so ready. I mean, it's as ready as we can be. I think the trial runs are probably good <laughs> to realize where the kinks are, where the holes in the plan are and to just remember that baby is doing good and they are just fine in the womb right now and a few more days is going to be good for them if they stay so that's where we're at at this point at 39 weeks and i wanted to share this update for any mamas that are going through prodromal labor of start and stop contractions of the mental like, stress and panic of what do i do now like this was not the plan Plans can change, and it's not going to be long, so I remind myself that and remind myself I've done this before, I can do this again. My body can push this baby out <laughs> and breathe this baby out. I can do this, and I can do this today or tomorrow or next week, whenever it's going to be, and it's going to be fine. It's going to be a beautiful experience. and probably different than before and so I'm trying to embrace that yesterday I was able to go to the chiropractor and get adjusted and I did not realize how many tough spots I was a piece of work yesterday at the chiropractor but thankfully things shifted and moved like very easily because my muscles are so loose right now I've had round ligament pain and so the stretches at the chiropractor really helped loosen things up and just kind of release some of that tension and stress that was in my body. And so I think that's helpful to get my body in the best optimal shape to go into labor. And then also last night I did a foot soak. I did cold water with some salts and baking soda and lavender oil. That was really nice, felt good on my feet because I had been walking a lot. And also had a heating pad on my back. So I was like, this is 39 weeks pregnant. I've got my feet in a soak and I've got a heating pad on my back. <laughs> We're just waiting on labor. And so that's real life when you're nine months pregnant. It's like you do what you can as far as comfort measures. 
and I tried to get some good sleep. I use all the pillows at this point. Like I'm propping up pillows behind me. I've got a pillow between my knees to help um, not put pressure on my pelvis and help things open up. And so I've got my whole little station there with my water bottle and my phone charger and just try to be ready. And so that's where we're at. But I did get some good sleep and I think that's one of the best things you can do is drink enough water, get enough sleep, take care of your body so you're ready to go into labor. And then today, I, I'm waking up, this is like first thing in the morning before my kids wake up, but today is going to be a full moon. And I was looking up the correlation and like the old wives tales of, you know, whether it's more likely that your water would break spontaneously at a full moon if you're full term and you're like ready to go. Um, because a lot of labor nurses and people that have seen births will say, you know, sometimes there's, it seems like there's more births happening on a full moon. So I looked into that and there's scientific studies that say that it's either, you know, not a bigger spike and people just kind of seem to remember if it's a full moon. And then there's other studies that say it's inconclusive. So I was like, that's interesting. I also looked up uh, the difference in barometric pressure because sometimes uh, when storms happen, it changes the pressure and that affects water like tides and things like that. So um, I looked that up and I thought that would be interesting to just <laughs> compare the full moon with the barometric pressure at the timeline of here I am at 39 weeks it's kind of happening at the same time. So if my body's ready and I'm rested and there's a full moon and the barometric pressure gets low, which it's supposed to and it's supposed to rain in the next day or so, I thought that might tip me over the edge. We will see, but baby's gonna come when they're ready. And I just think it's interesting to kind of ponder that and think about all of the variables that go into this baby being ready to come, and I know it's going to be any time, so I'm excited. It's going to be really good. I am just trying to keep the house clean, trying to have some help, and then take it easy. Other than that, just breathing, <laughs> coaching myself through this. It's going to be fine, and it's going to be exciting to meet our little one. So I wanted to thank you for watching these videos and keeping updated on our journey this time, being pregnant with baby number three. And I'll see you soon in our next update. Thanks for watching. Bye.